We're going to start with MDF. We started with full sheet of MDF. We cut it down 12 by 18 because that's what fits in a USPS shipping box and that's what we're going to create. We're going to create a Think Media sign from start to finish right now. Let's get started. You might be thinking, what is a media channel and a countertop channel have in common? Let me explain. Sean Cannell, Heather Torres, Omar, they're all an amazing team. They've actually taught me through their video while I ran on the treadmill and watched what they they did and implemented it into our business, I saw the power of video translating a message to an audience. I know that in 2019, I can get worldwide with my message if I do a few things that Sean taught. I really appreciate him taking the time to create valuable content, giving it away for free, and teaching a countertop guy a thing or two about media. Beep! Here we go. I don't know, Sean, you tell me, man. Coming up. Let's sand those edges. MDF is kind of rough, so we're gonna make it non-rough. This is just a rough cut edge with a, a quarter round router done on it. All right, we'll make that a little bit smoother there. Sean, Heather, Omar, the Think Media team, they came to our event. Stone Coat Countertops put on an event called the Artisan Summit, where we teach creators and builders and crafters, entrepreneurs, contractors, designers, how to turn their craft into cash, how to market using social media marketing, YouTube, Facebook, uh, different methods that have worked really well for us. We had a summit and discussed that, and Sean and Heather were willing to speak at that conference. Most of all, they did it on their own time. They really helped us grow that event and it translated to an amazing atmosphere. They really set the stage and really set the tone for the Artisan Summit. They posted those speeches online. You can go hear what they said. The tips, tools, and tricks do make you go further, faster. Thank you, Sean. Thank you, Heather. Guys, if you haven't seen that content, go check it out. We'll link it in the description below. All right, guys, pro tip. Leave your roller in the paint. Why? You don't have to wash it out. Okay, we'll let that coat dry. We'll come back after that's dry. We'll do a second coat and we're ready for the next step. We'll see you in a moment. You know where I learned question of the day? From Sean, question of the day. Anybody else learned anything from Sean, Heather, Omar, anybody from the Think Media team? Let us know in the comments below what has been your biggest takeaway from Think Media. Dinner is served or a sign or whatever the heck you want to make is served. It's really that easy. You know, you could do a couple of things. You can router in a sign, you could do vinyl lettering, you can do an inlay with a sticker. The sky's the limit when you understand epoxy and branding. All right, let that dry and we're ready for our first coat of epoxy. What do you do while your epoxy dries? You play the drums on your thighs. You kick some butt and you play your game because thank media, YouTube Hall of Fame. Woo! Hi. <laughs> let it dry. All right, Mike, we're rolling. Oh boy. Okay guys, we've let the paint dry uh, all on its own. Um, it's dry, all right, let's get started. So we're gonna start with the backdrop first. The back color of the Think Media sign is going to be black. I'm matching uh, really another pro tip that Sean taught was words on your thumbnails, they need to contrast. The most contrasting colors are black and white. His backdrop is black, his letters are white. Nice, bold, easy, readable print. And that's what we're gonna do in the Think Media sign with a stone coat twist. We're gonna do metallic, and then we're gonna add like maybe silver glitter over the whole thing, and we're gonna do a pearl inlay of the Think Media because it's kinda white, and from afar, it's gonna look black and white. And when you get up close and personal with the Think Media stone coat sign, you're gonna see how in-depth it really is. Sean, are you ready to get your mind blown? I say we just go black metallic, man. Sure. All right, let's hit it. You know another thing t uh, Sean taught me? He taught me punch perfectionism and fear in the face. Why should you do that? Because your videos originally, your first 50, maybe 100, maybe even 200 videos, they're not gonna be that great. So you punch fear in the face, you just do it. You press record, you plan before you record, and you figure out how to improve each and every video. And I really appreciate that advice. I couldn't agree more, and I have, boom, punch fear in the face, Sean. Whoa, that is cool. Looks like liquid metal, man. 
Okay, we're gonna pour our epoxy out. We're gonna trowel it with a 1 8 by 1 8 square notch trowel. We're gonna chop that with our brush to remove those trowel marks, and then we're gonna torch those bubbles out. We'll let it dry, and we'll be ready for the next step. Let's get started. Okay, I'm gonna remove any loose bristles from my brush, and I'm gonna start where I left a little bit of epoxy higher on my piece so that it primes my brush, but still leaves enough epoxy to level out. I really like the design that just chopping with the brush creates. It gives a really organic look as opposed to these lines from the trowel. You can see the look that chopping does. Guys, pro tip, key to your edges. Do them last after you chop the surface. You're gonna push epoxy over those edges in an uneven fashion and coming back with a brush and long horizontal strokes makes your edges appear nice and smooth. Using a glove hand to, again, erase any bumps, nibs, and nubs will also help your edges improve. And then finally, at the end of the project, you can sand and polish your piece to perfection if you require a perfect edge. That is cool, I like that black metallic. I put quite a bit in there, and depending on how much you put, we'll change the design. By leaving a very little bit, we'll keep it more translucent, and a ton will make it more uniform. If I want more of a design, and more defined, high definition metallics, I could come back late in the pour as this epoxy starts to gel up. I could chop it with a rag, I could chop it with a brush, I can use a gloved hand, and that's gonna create high points that then still level, but retain more of a defined metallic appearance. I really like this look. I think I'm gonna keep it like that, and I think Sean's gonna like it too. Okay, we got our black all set. It's dry. We're gonna sand the drips off, and then we're gonna router in the Think Media logo. Let's do it. Now that'll sit flat on my bed. Remember, you can use vinyl decal stickers. You can use something that you hand inlay. You can paint on this. You can do a clear. The sky's the limit. What kind of project will you do using these same methods of an inlay, epoxy over epoxy. Okay, this is all set and dry. We're ready to sand it flush. And now it's the moment of truth, it's the unveiling, and Mitch has been so excited about this button coming out. Let me go get him right now. Mitch, man, what do you think about our, our button mold? I'm so excited for this, man, <laughs> I cannot wait. Now you know Sean, you, he came out to our event. Yep. Uh, you've watched him for hours and hours and learned from him. We built our YouTube, YouTube channel a lot on those principles. Right. Are you stoked to send him the sign? I am stoked. He has helped us so much. His channel grow with video, think media. Watch him, subscribe, you'll learn tons. Yes, let's take the button out right now. Are you ready? Is, yes. All right, here we go. Boom, that is gonna look sick. <laughs> the resin play button is born. Yeah. So it's got a little bit of mold release spray here and I'm just wiping that down and that looks that looks wild, man. That is gonna be, it's got a little bit of roughness here. I'm gonna sand that, and, uh, and then I'm gonna pour a clear and embed that right there. Let's get going, man. All right, I'm gonna sand this and we're ready for the next step. Okay, I'm gonna get my sanding disc out and take this out. All right, let's put some silver glitter in this because we want it to bling. We know Sean likes black and white, but we're gonna add some flavor to Think Media. All right, we're gonna mix at a one-to-one -one ratio for about two minutes. We only need three ounces per square foot, but I mixed a little excess because I'm gonna make a new button and I'm making a turning blank at the same time because again, we're batch filming. How's that for a reveal, man? <laughs> That is so cool. All right, we're gonna chop it out. You can see little lines from that trowel, so chopping it will erase that. I didn't put a lot. You don't need it. Sometimes less is more, guys. 
All right, I'm gonna go clean that uh, button because I don't want any of that spray on there, and then we'll uh, embed the button. All right, I'm gonna wipe it down with acetone, and then uh, I'm gonna sand the edges because they're a little bit rough, and then we'll be ready to embed this. Nice, let's sand those edges. All right, pro tip, whenever you're embedding something into epoxy, you have to mitigate the air like a pitcher. If you were gonna glue a pitcher down, you wanna make sure it's totally glued down. So to get rid of some of that air getting trapped, I'm gonna coat the bottom of this and then I'm gonna place it, all right? Does that make sense? Now I have epoxy, so epoxy will actually fill in the air cavity. 